Have you ever gotten in trouble when you were in school for copying and pasting someone else's work? I have plenty of times. I was really good at networking during test time, but unfortunately in school, it was frowned upon. Welcome to the channel. Hit subscribe, hit thumbs up. I'm Sean John, aka The Middleman CEO, and today I got a really, really good treat for you. And by the way, for everyone who's enrolled in The Middleman CEO Masterclass, I cannot wait to work with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have an awesome time building your business and helping you to make money without having to go to work. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning about a middleman business, getting one started, or just learning about what it is and how it works, then either put the word middleman in the comments below or click the link in the video description below to get the free training. And uh, so I want to talk to you today about something that, that's very simple and I think it'll help you if you allow it to, and that is the idea of copy and pasting the rich. Uh, so a lot of the things that we see in this world, in society, that we deem successful, uh, most of it's, you know, it comes from someone else's ideas or from something that was that was done a time ago and, and they've been able, someone was able to utilize it and, and make it their own or recreate it or make it better, right? And so that got me to thinking that, wait a minute, there's so many things that successful people do that we don't necessarily have to always do the homework for. I don't like homework anyway, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that we can do that someone else has already done the work, already proven the concept. And so it's super easy for us to take that risk and go ahead and do it and copy and paste it because for them it's already been successful. So if we do the same thing they do, should be successful. So for instance, right? You're out, let's say you're out with your with your guys and, and you're flirting with some cute girls and, and your friend walks over and comes back with the phone number, right? And then, so what are you gonna say? I know what I would say. I would say, what did you say to her? Because I'm going to say the exact same thing to, to the other girl that I'm interested in, right? I'm just going to copy and paste. So I just want you to know you can copy and paste your way to success. And we're going to talk about that today. So I'm going to give you a list of things, probably eight, nine, ten things, something like that, that I believe you can copy and paste from the rich and be successful. Now, you need to do what they do. And that's what this list is going to be about. It's going to be about the poor and the middle class mindset and habits versus what the rich do. And in order to be successful, you don't have to re-enroll re in college. That won't, that, that probably won't help you. Uh, you don't have to go back to school. You don't have to go take a, a, a financial course. You don't have to do any of, that, any of that. You simply just copy and paste your way to success. So I have a middleman business. You guys know my story. I'm successful in running a middleman business. But it wasn't my idea. I'm not the originator of that. Uber did it. Lyft, Airbnb, Instacart, Instagram, Google, Facebook, Fiverr, all of these companies are middleman companies. All I did was copy and paste. So if you guys uh, get any value out of this video, smash the thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Help me out. Help me to grow the channel. And then I'm going to give you this great content. You ready? So in no particular order, none more valuable than the other, uh, we're just going to talk about, you know, some ideas that the, again, the poor use, uh, poor ideas and poor uh, fundamentals versus what the, the rich and the wealthy do, right? So we're going to talk about getting rid of the way most of us think, the 90%, and then thinking and behaving like the 10%. So we're going to copy and paste our way to success. You ready? Here's your cheat sheet. I'm going to give it to you starting right now. So let's get into it, right? So when it comes to copy and pasting the rich, most poor people choose, and, and mainly when I say poor, again, guys, if you watch my video, you know I'm talking about mindset, not about your bank account. Uh, choose, I'm so, not choose, uh, getting ahead of myself. All right, so poor people chase, that's what I meant to say, they chase money. That's what most poor people chase, whereas the rich, they chase, and we go through these pretty quickly so you guys can get it and, and implement it into your schedule. 
into your mindset and change your life. So the poor and the middle class, they chase money while the rich chase time. So if you guys are always out there thinking about how do I get money? How do I get money? The rich are asking, how do I get my time? How do I get my time? Right? That's why I love the middleman business model because, again, I didn't think of it. It's not my idea. I wish I could say it was, but it wasn't. The reason I love it is because it gives me a way to make money and still have my time. So the question I'm always asking is because I can go and get a job, but jobs will take up all of my time. See, I don't want to give up my time for money. I want to make money and keep my time as much as possible. So you guys chase money. I'll chase time, right? So the rich chase time while the poor and the middle class chase money, all right? The rich, here's what they always dream about. Paychecks, they love to get these things called paychecks from these places called jobs. Whereas the rich, they love to get this thing called cash flow, money moving to you, not money moving away from you. They love to get cash flow as opposed to paychecks from assets. Poor and middle class. Hey, I, I need a paycheck. I need a job so I can get a paycheck. The rich, I need an asset so I can get cash flow. One gives you freedom. One puts you in prison. Time prison, time freedom. You decide, right? And again, guys, in no particular order. So another, the poor, middle class, Pay taxes first. They are taxed first. Get that paycheck. Who's been in it? The government and a bunch of other people that you probably owe. But you're the last to get paid if you get a paycheck. Everyone else gets paid before it hits your bank account. Trust me. Tax first, whereas the rich taxed last. How are they able to do that? Because paychecks are taxed up front. Worst form of income you can make. Cash flow from an asset is taxed last. Best form of income you can make. Go back and look at Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, and that'll probably break it down for you. All right? Poor, obsessed with what? Buying liabilities. I hope you guys can read this. I know I'm not the most legible person, so I hope you guys can see it. I'm reading it to you, so just in case you're, you're taking notes, uh, and I know you are. So the poor obsessed with are obsessed with buying liabilities, right? So they believe that, I'll just put, let's see, I'll put it somewhere. Uh, I'll put an H right here, house, house. That's, the, that's, so... The poor are obsessed with buying liabilities. The rich are obsessed with acquiring. Notice the difference in wording. Acquiring assets. Buying liabilities, acquiring assets. Let's put a house in the middle. The poor believe that a house is an asset, while the rich believe that a house is a liability. The poor believe a house is an asset. The rich believe a house is a liability. Follow rules of cash flow. Money flowing to you, asset. Money flowing away from you, liability. When you pay your, your rent or you pay for your mortgage, does money move to you or away from you? There you go. That's how you decide. All right, so buying houses, liabilities, just stuff you don't, you don't want to be stuck with, right? So the poor believe in one source of income. One source of income, while the rich believe in multiple streams of income. Okay, something's happened to one, there's another stream of income coming in. One source of income, lose your job, lose everything. Right? You don't want to be in that category, trust me, it is not fun, right? Uh, let's see, so one source of income... Uh, emergency account. This one ain't gonna hurt your feelings. The poor believe in having an emergency account. Emergency account, rainy day, savings account, whatever you want to call it. Whereas the rich believe in having an opportunity account. All about the words. 
My account is looking for opportunities. Your account's looking for an emergency. I don't want an emergency. You shouldn't want one either. Sure, life happens, but we're not going to manifest it. I ain't doing that, okay? All right, so stay away from the emergency accounts. Rename it to an opportunity account, okay? Because of a lot of this, poor, going to pass down generational poverty. Because they can't think long-term. They only think about surviving today, surviving tomorrow. They live in a world of lack. The rich are going to think about passing down generational wealth. They think long-term. They live in a world of abundance. That's a mindset. God is a God of abundance. Now you know. It's biblical. Is it biblical for you to be rich? God is a God of abundance. There you go. I came that you might have life and that you might have life more. All right, you got it. Abundant. Now you know. God has no problem with you being rich. Ever. Right? So, all right, we'll, we'll just do a couple more and then we'll stop. And, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that. So generational poverty, generational wealth. Uh, the poor believe that debt is bad. This might shock you. The rich believe that debt is good. Really quickly, a, a lesson on that. I remember uh, a few years ago, the big word was Trump wasn't paying taxes. And he was he was making millions and millions of dollars, but he was paying like a, a ridiculously low amount of tax. I think it was like 700 bucks. Well, the reason, because you guys got to learn to ask questions and not just get emotional, always be logical and sit back and go, wait a minute. So he's not paying much taxes, but he ain't in prison and the IRS is not trying to arrest him. So it must be legal. What is he doing? See, that's logic. That's logic. Not, oh my God, this guy's not paying taxes. No, no, that ain't logic. That's emotional. Sit back and be logical. I challenge you to do that. I promise you it's going to change your life. Be logical. Wait a minute. So how's he doing it? Good question. What they don't teach you in college and probably in most homes is that debt is tax-free. Debt is a loan. It's money borrowed. If you borrow money from someone, there's no taxes on it because it's not earned income. That's why I said earlier, your paycheck is the worst way you can make money because it's earned income and they tax it up front. Whereas if I borrow a million dollars from a bank or a lender, I get the million dollars. I pay back interest to whoever, whomever I borrowed from, but I don't owe the government anything. See, tax-free. So never forget that. That debt is uh, is tax-free. So debt, debt is bad for the poor. Debt is good for the middle class, right? The middle class and the poor believe that there's a such thing as job is safe. Whereas the rich and the wealthy know that's risky and they know there's no such thing. And I mean no such thing as a safe, secure job. Go back and watch the video I did. Uh, it's one of my recent videos. And uh, you'll, you'll know exactly what I mean. I'm not going to get into that on here. But no job under any circumstance is safe. Also, really quickly, uh, the poor believe that they live in a world of lack. There's never enough. The rich mindset is that we live in a world of abundance. There's always enough. Uh, the poor believe that investing is risky. The, the rich believe that investing is necessary. The poor can only see short term, the, the rich can see long term. And so uh, you got to be willing to play the game a different way and look at it a different way, right? So the poor believe in playing it safe while the rich believe in taking, you know, taking risk. You want to take calculated risk. You don't want to lose everything, but you want to be smart. You want to develop a habit of trying new things. Most people will never do that. And that's why most people will end up on the left side of this list. If you want to pass down the left side of this list to your kids and to your family and friends, I could predict their financial future. I guarantee it, 100% accurate. But if you want to pass this down and say, hey, scrap all of this, let's start doing it this way. And if you do that, I promise you it's going to change people's life. And again, I can still predict it with 100% accuracy, right? So I was here and I'm now moving myself and my family to here, right? A little bit at a time, but that's how you do it if you have to. However you have to do it to be successful, I promise it's going to change your life. All right. I hope you guys got some value from this. Please let me know in the comments if the videos are helping you. That's the only way I know. Smash thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Share the video with someone else who, who could use this. Let's change minds, let's change lives, let's change finances. But the way we do it is by changing the mindset. And I'm telling you, you don't have to start from scratch. 
you can simply copy and paste what they already do because what we know is that it already works. If you would like to get into the free live training coming up Thursday where I teach you some personal finance and how to build a business from your phone, if you guys want to learn that Thursday night, do me a favor, click the link in the first comment below and click the link in the video description below and you'll get the invite to register for the training. It's absolutely free, not gonna cost you anything. Spend an hour with me, and I promise you I'll change your life. Middleman, middleman, middleman. See you guys in the live training. Peace.